The final chapters of your book talk about meditation. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us a little bit about what's happening to our brains yeah. when we meditate mm -hmm. scientifically? And yeah. how can we meditate on a daily basis? Yeah, yeah. So we know um, about what happens in the brains of very, very expert meditators. And they have very different patterns of brain activity than you or I. Tibetan monks that you know have between 10,000 and 50,000 hours of meditation experience. And when um, neuroscientists have, have looked at the patterns of electrical activity that you can measure from the skull, this is EEG or electroencephalography, um, they find very, very high levels of a frequency of activity called gamma, gamma band activity, much higher than you'd see in, in normal people, non-meditators, or even people that have a little bit of experience in meditation. And not only are those patterns different when the, the controls or the monks are asked to meditate, but even in non-meditating conditions, they have much more of this activity, which probably uh, relates to the idea that in Tibetan Buddhism, um, the idea is to be in a constant state of meditation. So it's not like, oh, now I'm going to try and meditate. You're, you're always in this state. And that seemed to be reflected in, in, this, in this activity. So something about all of that activity seems to have enhanced and kind of strengthened the gamma band activity. Um, do we know exactly what that means? No, but we do know what the monks are particularly good at. They are amazingly good at focusing their attention inwardly on their, on their breath, on a mantra. Actually, they were asked to do what's called loving kindness meditation in this particular paper, where you basically adopt an idea or a state of loving to everybody in the world. And you can start small with a puppy or a baby, <laughs> but then work up to the people that you really don't like and try and do that. But, but that's, um, that's what they were doing. And for the rest of us that may not be Tibetan monks, uh, there are also studies showing that um, increases in meditation or meditation can um, decrease stress levels. Um, they can have effects on attention, improve your attention, just like exercise does. Um, and there's even studies suggesting that there are anatomical changes in people that have several years of meditation experience. So um, there's evidence that meditation, just like exercise, is causing brain plasticity. And um, that is fascinating because uh, it's not that you have to work and you have to sweat to get this to happen. You can sit still and um, work your brain in a very different way and, and reap the benefits. And I think that's why so many people want to meditate. They, they get a little hint of that and they want to try to bring more of that into their lives. And my best tip for trying to get on a meditation program, because as you know, I have a subchapter in my book called um, Confessions of a Yo-Yo Meditator. I've tried all the kinds of meditations and failed at many of them. And the trick was, twofold. One, start small. You don't have to meditate for an hour. I still don't meditate for an hour. Just start with one minute of quiet. Um, and also find the kind of, med there's so many different, thousands of kinds of meditation. And I found one that I really enjoy, that I go back to over and over again. Just like exercise, find the kind that you like. You can start small, you don't have to become the triathlete. So that same strategy that worked for me for exercise and got me over the hump, also ended up getting me over the hump for meditation. But I think people try, e even 10 minutes can be too much, too long. And if you get frustrated those first few times, it, it makes it even harder to come back. 